feed podcast Tommy K gaming. Hey, we get, this is getting okay. Here we go, man. This is this is this is this is uh, the social network. This is where it always goes wrong. You know, I want to talk to other people too, right? So if we call it something with feed and Tommy, then it always says you included. But what if I invite like Boko in? You know, right? Would that be a three way, or would you just prefer to speak to him one on one? But you want to always be with me, you and me, talking to others. See, this is this is what we talked about last time. I wasn't sure if I was a guest or if I was one of the hosts. Because I think you're a guest. <laughs> oh shit! Oh, here we go. Oh that's, shit! That's why, that's why I wanted you to clarify it last time because it wasn't even certain. Like, uh, uh, damn, Tommy already pushing feedback out of the picture. <laughs> what? No, I. The Dave is always invited to do this with me. But what, what if one day I want to, like Tommy I told you guys, I want to talk to Lisa picture. on the podcast. And if the name is then Feed Tommy, that's weird. Who the fuck is Feed? Who is that? There's a girl and Feed? I'm going to watch that. You know, Dave? Um, I, I see where you're coming from. Um, I guess I don't really feel overly compelled to edit podcasts I'm not actually going to be featured in. I know Mark only worked for free for a very long time before he actually started getting paid, but I... Uh, <laughs> I, I would intend to uh, get some gain from it initially, okay, probably just from exposure. Guy. Well, let's I give you. Let's do the following. Uh, let me just ban this guy. Let's just do the following. I think that's the best uh, scenario for everyone. When you and me do something, it's our thing, and when I do something alone, it's a completely different thing. That seems to make sense, I guess. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. So okay, then we need a name for for the for for this. Well, I guess if, if it's subbing, don't want to be that. Well, yeah, in that case, I mean, you're making it two separate things, then, aren't you? Then. Yeah, yeah, I guess, yeah, to make everyone happy, yeah. <laughs> okay, just making sure we understand. Okay. Um, so this is the reason when I have voice calls with you, we like no information gets transferred, and when I have a voice call, an actual conversation with you one on one live, I feel like we get so much information is transferred. I don't it's know true. why you hate it's calling true. me, Tommy. I'm very, I'm, I hate calling people. A lot of people always text me, for example, the Minecraft people right now, Tommy, we need to talk to you. But I legit do not want to talk to people. I think I feel like it's such an invasion to my privacy. I like, listen, even if it's about life and death, I, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> like these random people, I want to talk to you obviously right now. But like it's, it's 10 p.m. and I'm just sitting here and I'm trying to jerk off to hentai and someone is like, hey, can I call you? No, you can't. Leave me alone. Don't you feel the no. same? Uh... The hentai bit? No, just the, the calling bit. <laughs> I can't relate to the hentai bit. Um, like, who the I fuck don't... still likes to be on the phone with people? I don't spontaneously call people. Anyway, let's formally start this off, okay? All right. Hello, Tommy. I'm Hello, Dave. Dave. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello, everybody. So, you don't like getting called by people. <laughs> exactly. I think that's uh, the entire generation. The under 30 year olds, they, they don't like to do calls a lot. The, a lot of people in chat will, uh, maybe you will agree with this while you're older. Let's say you have to do a call to a public office or to a doctor, and you have to. It's, it always makes you cringe. It's, you don't want to do it. It's, it's, it's something that's not fun, right? I think I can relate to it because it's kind of like when you want to speak to your nan, but you just don't want to have like an hour conversation. You just <laughs> want to be able to say, How are you doing, nan? You're doing okay? Great. And then jump ship, you know? Exactly. Exactly, and it's always as, as, as I just said, this 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 privacy thing. I just want to sit in my room, and there's people in Discord. Hey, Tommy, we need to talk about something urgent. And listen, we we're talking about the fucking Minecraft plugin here. It's not that urgent. So next, if you're watching, you're beautiful. Okay, that's my Minecraft admin. But yeah, when the stream is over, I don't want to talk to anyone anymore. Do you get called quite often on Discord? Don't you know these memers that just randomly call you? When I check my Discord messages, there's always random dudes with fucking weird ass pictures and they they just call me. And then I always call them back and then they're they're like, Oh god, Tommy, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I feel really mean because I always just reject the call. I instantly see it coming yeah, through sure. and I'm like, I have no idea who you are. Why would you just call me out of the blue? You know, it's even weirder when they don't even send you a DM. It's like there's not like even a hi or anything. It's just like yeah, a blind exactly. call out of the blue. And then times I have accepted the call, they always just say something like, Oh, I'm sorry, it was a mistake. It's like, it wasn't a yeah. mistake. You, well, now they're you... all calling me these idiots. <laughs> <laughs> like just yesterday, I was checking my Discord messages, and there's a guy I deleted already, and he invited me to this. I always get this. He invites me to a Discord that has five members, and it's called like the Cat Girl Discord, 
And then he calls me and calls me and calls me and he's like, Tommy, why aren't you joining? I get this shit all the time. It's weird. There might be some like pretty awesome hentai you might get into. Maybe it's for you. Maybe they know what you're into. I have my own preferences. I, need, I let no one else tell me what to watch and what to look at and stuff. <laughs> yeah. So the question was, starting question is always the same. How are you doing? I personally feel great lately. I'm doing a lot of sport, even though I still feel like a boomer. I just slept nine hours. I woke up this morning and I was... This is when you, when you get old. Do you have the same? I woke up this morning and I'm completely fucked for two hours. My neck hurts. I make the wrong moves. Everything hurts. My back. All the muscles are fucked. Yeah. Do you have that too? Don't I say no. I tend to get like, like, like stiffness in my, like my fingers and my wrists when I wake up in the morning. You ever do that? Like you try and you wake up in the morning, you try and clench your fist, but it's really hard to do because you feel I, your I hands don't have feel. That. I don't have that. For me, it's the neck from look, uh, looking at the PC all day. My and apparently people tell me it's gout. Apparently it's something that you eat. I, I don't know. I really like... I don't, I don't, what's your relationship like with food? Because I, I, I it's my religion. tend to like... Your religion? Food is everything, man. Oh, man. I, I tend to overindulge. I'm like a binger. Food. Like, I'm cheating. Right now, I'm doing intermittent fasting. You do the same, right? And I cannot yep. eat until 12. And I'm just already cheating on it. We were just in the supermarket, and they're... I'm like, f not not friends with the keep up guys, but the, the keep up guys, they, they see me, they're like, Hey, how you doing? You coming or what? And I'm like, hey, sure, I'm coming. So I was eating a fa fat keep up at 10 a.m. this morning. That's how my relationship long, with food. How long is your fast period? It's uh, uh, stopping at 8 p.m. In, in the evening and 12 p.m. 12, 12 p.m. you say in English. Uh, 12 p.m. next morning. So 18, uh, that's, that's 16 hours, right? Yeah, 16 hours. But oh, I, wow, I cheat I on it a lot. What's All yours? right. Are you still? Do you feel like you still get into it, or is it? Or I'm is trying. It... I'm trying. I mean, in the end, I understand intermittent fasting for me myself to just stop with the fucking, uh, like 10 p.m. You're watching movie. You're eating chips and chocolate. That's stopping. Yeah. That's stopping. You know, and that's already like 300 calories less a day and shit. That's good. I feel like I go into rhythms with it. I normally do 20 hours. I use an app called Zero. 20 on my phone. hours. That's a wow. Yeah, so I only eat between about 1 and 5-ish. It depends, really, because I activate like a timer, so it's not consistently the same times of every day. I like the flexibility because I just don't want to be restricted to a certain time if I'm, for instance, going out, for instance. That's been easy with the lockdown wow. and everything. You are yeah. legit doing 20-hour fasting. Yeah, yeah. Dude, that's, that's it, a fucking lot, man. So what wow. people don't get is they think that because you are allowed to eat as much as you want, you tend to just make up all the calories within that small time frame. But it doesn't work out that way because you might feel that you're really hungry when it comes to like one o'clock and that's your feeding window. Three. But you try and eat a massive meal and I don't know why, but when you eat less, you just don't, you, get, you feel like you just get full a lot quicker, you know? Yeah, yeah. But 20 hours seems a bit heavy, man. Do it's something you, I worked up to. I think. This? How long have you been doing this? Uh, I'll admit my success rate has been a little bit hit and miss. I feel like I get into a rhythm and I can do it for a full week and then I'll derail and I'll be off for a little while. I think it's on and off for maybe the last six months. Okay, yeah. so the main question will be now, do you see difference? Do, are you losing weight? I think. You think? Are I'm you not testing it? Checking it out? No, no, no. I'm weighing myself as well. Um, I think I gained more from... I think I gained more from like just my overall health and well-being. I, I don't know, but if, if someone's like really insulin sensitive and they're eating a lot of sugar, they tend to have like peaks and valleys when they're like going up and down with their insulin. I guess if you're diabetic, you probably can relate to this. And hmm. I found that because I was eating around the clock all the time, I don't know, I felt myself like particularly wake up in the morning and then just, just to being a bit, I don't know, as you described, like everything just hurts and everything's just annoying and it takes you a long time to come around yeah. and i tend to find that during the day and the evening as well but when i like consistently eat within a t short time frame i didn't define that it was i don't know it wasn't as aggressive when it came down to like these uh feelings of i don't know being i don't know it's, it's really difficult to describe it. i guess it is kind of like pre-diabetic because I, I am on the bmi like overweight so technically i maybe i would be on the, the warning scale for pre-diabetic oh man after all, we should have called this the Boomer Cast. Oh God, I talking know, about how we feel after bed and how we're getting too fat. How's the hips? The hips? What do you mean? Yeah, hips? that's what boomers complain about, don't you they? Mean if, what I, I, you mean if my hips hurt? Yeah, like. Oh, never, never in my life. Nah, no, me neither. Me neither. <laughs> never. 
The lower back is always, if you're a gamer, uh, lower back is obviously an issue. Uh, in the last years, since streaming became my job, obviously, uh, as always, the neck. Don't you have any neck problems? No. Do you have a PC all day? I think he's... I, I have... Did you have... Have you got, like, a gamer chair? No, I have, like, a shitty IKEA chair. Maybe uh, I need to get a good chair. So... I don't find I have neck problems, but I have like a cushion on the back and like the lumbar support. So, and ever since then, I've been okay. I tend to have like issues on like my lower back because I don't know if it's because I'm holding too much weight or I'm really tall. God, I feel like this is the boomer podcast, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like I've got really good etiquette when it comes down to sitting in front of my computer. Like, I always keep it really upright and I try and like have like foot support and I try and be like level with my eyes at the top of the monitors and stuff. I don't know. I follow all that stupid office bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I, I've always had a shitty back. I've always, I was always in school. I was always like this. If you can see, I've, I've, I've never had a straight back. Never. Big issues with that. Big issues. Well, maybe let's step away from this boomer topic because we kind of promised to get into the Hoi Four Paradox topic. I have a lot of questions prepared here, and yeah, the boomer cast talking about all <coughs> these uh, little hurdy hurdies. That's make makes me feel old, man. Makes me feel old. But I yeah, want to so tell let's... you, Dave, to finish this, you when I saw you in real life, you you look younger than you are. I want to tell you that. Yeah, a lot of people say that. Yeah, they you always say... go through as a 29er for the year. People always say, man, you look a lot... You're a lot larger than... <laughs> this sounds really wrong. <laughs> you're a lot larger than I I thought you would be. That's true. That's true. If you meet Dave in real life, he's he's actually pretty tall. Yeah. Also very chunky. How... I'm 6'2". How tall are you? 6'2", man. I don't speak uh, colonial. Uh, oh, I'm balls, 181 man. centimeters. 181 centimeters in feet is 5 point... <clears throat> How much is that? Uh, wait here. I am 5.93 feet. The chat is saying that's 6 foot. Like around 6. 5, 9 to 6. Whatever the fuck that even means. There wasn't a big difference between me and your height. There wasn't a big difference. Are oh, you a bit tall? You're a bit tall. Anyway, Davy, let's stop the boomer stuff. Are you ready for some questions from the community about Hoi so Four? Is Our gaming related. Game. Yes, we promised to get more gaming related, didn't we? Wow. Yeah, yeah. Fire away. What's the question? Okay, here we go, gentlemen. I put down some questions from the community. Uh, I'm just gonna read them as they go. It's gonna be, it's gonna be great. Uh, let's start with uh, easy. Get into the topic, Dave. What is your overall feeling right now of Hoi4? You're still making content for it uh, on YouTube. It seems like you didn't get tired in the last four years, just like me. We're not tired of the game yet. How do you feel about Hoi4 right now? Uh, yeah. Do you feel like the, the the air is out? Do you feel like there should be no DLC? What uh, What is your overall opinion? I feel like he doesn't have that spark <coughs> that it used to have. I feel like when I used to load the game up and play as any country, I felt like I was playing a new game and it was it was just as fun as the first time I played. I think the experience I'm having right now is because I've played every scenario, every focus tree. I'm less surprised than I ever was before. And I think some of that spark, that specialness has been taken out. Don't get me wrong though, I feel like I could still play the game consistently and still enjoy it and make videos for it. But yeah, there's some of that flair that just isn't there anymore than it used to be. Yeah, I fully understand. But I, I guess that's just normal, a normal development after all these. You also must have thousands of hours, right? How many hours you got? 4,200 now, I think. Oh, damn, you're above me. I think I'm three and a half thousand. I'm just loading up Steam. That's fucking crazy. How many days is that? Uh, one sec. Um... Yeah, three and a half thousand. That's actually kind of... Man, we're reaching World of Warcraft numbers here. 4,200 divided by 24 I spent 175 days of my life in Hoi 4, probably 80% of that in a lobby. <laughs> yeah, because I was about to say that I think I've probably played more overall games from start to finish than you have because you probably sit in the multiplayer lobby most of the yeah, time. Yeah, a lot of lobbies. I remember there was this thing back in the day when um, I started to play a lot of multiplayer in these multiplayer lobbies is that when I was a nobody, nobody knew who I was. A lot of these multiplayer games, the host required you to have a certain amount of hours. Hey, you can only play Germany if you have 1k hours. You know, that was that how it was back in the day. So I legit will just turn on my PC, turn on Hoi 4 and we'll just go AFK for 24 hours just to farm hours so these guys will let me play majors. That was yeah, crazy yeah. back in the day. Yeah, no yeah, one the, cares anymore. The, I, why don't they care anymore? If you look at the lobbies multiplayer, there's not. I don't see this hardcore multiplayer anymore where they're like, 
hardcore vetting. You need to be whitelisted. You need to have a certain amount of hours. I don't see that a lot anymore. Then what do you think that is? Well, the game is slow. The multiplayer is slowly dying, which is normal. It's slowly. It's been four years. People look for new games. They they go next. And this is where I want to give a shout out to Hoi4 and, and be positive. We live in a world where you consume video games very, very quickly. You get very bored of games quickly. And Hoi4 has been a game for me and for you, Dave, and I think a lot of people in the chat, that has kept us at bay for thousands of hours. That's really good. It's a big achievement, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, a game that makes you play 4K hours? Goddamn, not bad. The Witcher can't do that. <laughs> not gonna happen. And what do you think? Can't do that. Where do you think Hoi peaked? Where was the multiplayer scene most active? Ooh, that's a good question. Oh, that's a good question. When did I, I, my came? first thought was like Death and Dishonor, like in between Together for Victory and Death and Dishonor. I feel like there was a lot of hype then, and I felt like I was involved. But was it because I was involved? Is that why I remember that more? I don't know. You probably better know than me. That's a good question. I would say it was 19, as Chet is saying. I will say, but I, I can't. It's, a, it's very foggy for me, but. I feel like when the DLC came with the ships, man, the guns, that's where kind of everything died. That's where it started to dip a bit. With the submarine freeze and nobody understood what the hell is going on with fuel yeah. and, and the navy. I think that's where it slowly went down a bit now. I, I guess. Yeah, a lot of people in chat say yes. Out Something of all like the that. features, though, that was the one that confused most people, didn't they? Like, Because I got bombarded with comments when that first came yeah. out. Like, how do I play the Navy? What's the Navy all about? I still don't get it. And I think to this day, I think yeah. people still don't get the Navy. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but they just don't comment about it. They just don't talk about it. They've yeah. always accepted that I just don't get the Navy and I don't understand it. So That's really true. Moving it's on. It's like, f for me, that felt like, this is going to sound weird, but it makes sense to me. It was like a step back to Hotspur and Free. I think Hearts of Iron 3 is my own opinion the worst uh, Paradox game ever because it was too complex. It was for a certain amount, a certain type of person that's really nerdy about numbers and, and stuff. And I believe that Hoi 4 is so much more successful than Hearts of Iron 3 because it's much more approachable and open for a casual normal audience. Like normal people understand kind of what to do. And like the Navy in Man the Guns, man, you need to study to understand that stuff. It was like a big... It, it, it was a step away from ca casualty from how you say that in english casual yeah. casual yeah 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 it, you know what i mean more accessible and definitely has more of a i think that was the biggest <coughs> issue when hoi 4 first came everyone kept saying like this is a massive downgrade from hoi 3 and i i didn't feel that way because did, did, have you played hoi 3 i have 50 hours in hoi 3 and i hated every single one of them exactly yeah, I, I felt exactly the same way what frustrated me the most is the setup phase takes like a full 20 minutes like assigning all the dudes assigning all the armies and whatnot selecting all the research it was just the barrier for entry was massive massive mm. don't get me wrong there's some hardcore fans of that game uh but it just wasn't accessible and that was the issue and people complain today that hoi 4 simplified but it makes it more accessible and we're living proof that hoi 4 is a success because we've become content creators with those games Exactly, as you just used the word hardcore, that's perfect. Hoi 3 was too hardcore and what made Hoi 4 so successful is that it was much more open. Like I have a, I have a friend in real life uh, and he's a, just a normie, he doesn't play games a lot. And he just started Hoi 4 some days ago, he got a new PC and he, he likes it. And I believe this person, this this casual gamer, this this normie you will say, will have never gotten into Hoi 3. Way too inaccessible. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. What do you think Hoi 4 needs next then? What? What would you think would reinvigorate the either multiplayer scene or ah, the game as a whole? That brings us to the question from Grand Admiral Thorn. What will you add in Hoi 4? Let's leave that question. What would you add in Hoi 4? Let's, uh, let's say it like that. Oh, what would you add? It's a good question. I've I've always been a big advocate, and that's obviously pretty obvious. You need more focus trees. As I'm as I'm playing World 256 and Kaiserreich a lot lately, you I've I always say that World 256 feels like Hearts of Iron 4.5. Because every nation has a focus tree and a lot of decisions to make. And I think focus trees need to happen, which is coming step by step, right, with all the DLCs. But after four years, you, you still have the, the Russian focus tree that doesn't give you democracy and stuff. That's focus trees mostly, focus trees. And in my opinion, a balance. I truly believe balance is needed. I always said that. I think tanks are way too broken. We saw yesterday my opponent game. If you have heavy tank freeze, you just destroy the entire single player game anyway. So my answer will be more balance and more focus trees. Or maybe more decisions. To In the end, to say every nation has to feel unique, different. 
You know, Siam yeah. doesn't feel very different from Brazil. They have the same focus tree and not much is going on there, you know? Yeah, agreed. What, what will I, you... I think... Yeah. What I want to see as kind of more ambitious, I want to see some of the old legacy features that even to this day, I don't fully understand get overhauled. Supply, for instance. Mm -hmm. To this day, sometimes you make a pocket and you encircle an enemy division and they have supply mm -hmm. and to this day i still don't have any clue how that supply yeah, got yeah. there I've done, there's so, some, yeah yeah you, you go through all the possibilities it's like is it a victory point no is it is there an airport there no is it connected to any land is it connected <laughs> to the ocean is it connected to a port no and yet you've got 14 supply like how does the system even work i mean we're living proof of it we've played 3,000, 4,000 hours. To this day, we still don't get yeah. how that supply system works. And it's on the list of Dan wants to change and overhaul. So I think he acknowledges there's definitely flaws with it. It'd be mm. kind of nice if there was more that the player could get involved with, maybe spend command power to get a boost of supply into a certain area, like prioritize it as a front line, for instance. That'd be kind of cool because that was in House of Mind 2 and I thought that was a really cool feature. You'd like give, was it like 150% supply to a division mm -hmm. and it would be able to fight on the front line more effectively and ah, yeah, use I know less what you supply. Mean. Yeah, yeah, really yeah it was really cool because I, I felt like I used to spam that button way too much. Yeah, I remember. In Hot Spine, I played Hot Spine 2 a lot as a kid and there was this button. Chat, if you don't know, there was a button in Hot Spine 2 and I think 3 where you press a button on your division and your division will take some supply and for 40 days it doesn't run out of supply because it got supply. I guess the equivalent of that in Hearts of Iron 4 is when you have a logistics wizard and it's like one of the command powers that no one ever presses and ever oh, uses. I didn't even know it oh. existed until now. <laughs> I know, I know. There's so much potential yeah. with those those little ability buttons. But for the most part, apart from staff office plan, I don't think I'll press any of those as well. Yeah. So yeah. my opinion, I think that needs to be changed as well. I feel like, I think the reason people don't click them is because I think it costs too much command power. And if you've got like... 24 divisions that are all 40 with. It's impossible to press that button because it costs like 200 command power and you can never store up maximum more than 100 True. anyway. So in that yeah. case, they never press it. I think probably what you should do is they should allow it so you can press it just for specific divisions so it loses less power so um, people oh, are more aware very, of it, That's I guess. very important, yeah. You know when you have a full army of 24 divisions and you only have 100 command power, you cannot use the abilities. So you have to take out like six divisions so you have enough command power for the remaining divisions to have a uh, force attack or something. That's always a bit... That's very oh, true. Yeah, someone here. in the comments, <clears throat> someone in the chat has just said peace treaty before all majors did. Just talking about the peace conferences. No. Yeah, I mean, that goes without saying. Peace conferences are awful. So yeah. awful. Yeah. For instance, like, if there's lots of miners in a war that can never get enough points to actually take anything in the peace deal, why are they even there? Why, why do I have to hit pass when they can never take any land anyway? Surely that should have been factored in with peace conferences from the very beginning. Sure. Why is there a button? What if the only option is to annex the person that I've defeated in a war? Why is there other options? Why do I even need a peace conference if I just want to annex all of them and war go anyway? Like, some of these just feel like what, the no-brainers, you know? And it, I think that's the deal though, isn't it? Because that system of peace conference is the same one from 2016. It's the original one that came with the base game. It's never, yeah. ever been changed. So it just shows its age. That's true. That's really true. I feel like in every, I play a lot of single player lately and every game just ends up in, in, a, in a peace conference mess and stuff. Especially now where if you can't leave a war because some other nation became a major, you have now the resistance problem you have to take care of and stuff. A great example, I was playing Poland yesterday, I, I killed German Italy, but Japan is a major in the Axis, so I, you never get a peace deal until you went all the way to Japan as Poland. That's always a bit frustrating, I would say. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, uh, you just brought me to the point when you talk about command power, something I would always wish for that I think uh, uh, Road to 56 and Kaiser X doing very well, there needs to be more use for political power, I feel like. Uh, after after 1940, 1941, you don't need your political power anymore a lot. There's not much to yeah. do with it. You got all your uh, advisors, you have your stability on 100%, and it just doesn't do anything. Can you remember four decisions? And when you'd gone through all your focus tree, you'd be sitting on like 2,000 max political yeah, power yeah, I remember nothing when to spend it out, <laughs> You played Germany with Hitler's uh, bonus on PP, and you just had infinite PP in multiplayer very quickly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, too true. And yeah, I agree, actually, because it gets to the point where, like, you've got max stability, you've done all the ideological decisions. It's like, what's the point of political power? It'd be kind of nice if it just, I don't know, if you just could do more with it. Yeah, there's always, like, limitations late game. Exactly. I think, 
one of the things I would like to see change too is just the the flexibility of where divisions can be used. I think some of the penalties tanks get and mobile divisions get in mountains and forests is just backbreakingly painful. It's yes. made most of my games just I mean, I and Torio are living proof of that, another YouTuber. All we make is infantry artillery every single game versus the AI. Now, I understand multiplayer is a different, completely different scenario, but for us, there's no point going for anything else because artillery and infantry have got decent soft attack and they haven't got those really nasty penalties for attacking difficult terrain. It's like if I make a tank and I get stuck in the Alps, I'm like, I'm stuck there because those tanks are never going to break the Alps. Funny true. I just said that yesterday where I made the, the craziest heavy tank freeze that just wreck everything, but the moment you see a, a forest or a mountain, you can just... Say goodbye, no matter who's defending it. True. Yeah, I, I guess people would always say, oh, why don't you use special forces? But for the most part, special forces are just a pain in the ass to use. Like, the limitation factor on them and the fact that they don't really outperform regular infantry by that much, it's like, I feel like I'm putting a lot of extra resources into a specific division that's just a pain in the ass, but it doesn't actually result in any extra firepower. Well, a little bit extra, but just not enough for, for what I want. And yeah, maybe there should be technologies somehow that allow maybe tanks to transverse over more difficult terrains or difficult weathers, for instance, and that maybe would make it a little bit easier to use those vehicles in those scenarios. I think maybe I'm the problem. Maybe the problem is that late game, when we've got big front lines, I just can't be asked to micro some. Do you ever just like put all the divisions on aggressive and just hit go oh, for the field marshal? I'm getting older uh, and more lazy. Yeah, but back in the day in the high level multiplayer, you couldn't do that. You had to micro everything yourself. And when you look at multiplayer, it's kind of the contrary. I would wish that there would be less tanks. If you look at the meta in, in multiplayer, these people, like the good players right now, they legit just spam out 20 whiffs. Uh, of infantry so they have enough time to only spam tanks the entire meta i think this is also what killed my roleplay games lately is everybody just does tanks and whoever has the best tanks just wins in the end like in multiplayer it's very feels like this yeah that's yeah multiplayer there you go as that you I, I the last multiplayer game uh like a meta style multiplayer game that was probably over two years ago so Hmm. You definitely know more than I do. So yeah, so I, I, don't, in... yeah I, I don't even play these competitive games anymore because you just join them and it's always the same strategy. Just tanks, 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 tanks. Someone in the chat just says, has feedback ever had adaptable? So that's a trait that generals can have when they have two terrain traits. Yeah, um, it's Makes insanely it strong. Well, it used to be. It used to fifty percent. It used to ignore all terrain penalties by fifty percent. Yeah, and then they nerfed it to thirty percent. Uh, Man, which is still broke, it's still broken to this day in multiplayer. Yeah, it's, in it's still pretty strong. The reason I, I highlight that message is because I used to go on about Adaptable, saying it was really strong when it was really OP. And there's been a few things I've noticed that I've said is really OP and really strong that Paradox have later on nerfed. <laughs> and I'm starting to think, I'm a paranoid? Or are I actually listening to certain bits of my videos and saying that certain things are strong and then Dave, nerfing Dave them later the on? Source, guys. He has the power. I don't know. It, it's, it's happened like on, I can't think of the other occasions, but it's happened to at least three separate occasions where I've said something. Oh, this is broken. This is really OP. And later on, PDX nerf it, and I'm kind of linking. Should I start saying certain things that are already strong? A week, and maybe they'll do the reverse. <laughs> maybe they'll buff them. Maybe we have to use you as a token like this. I mean, we've had three patches now, and each patch they've nerfed submarines. And every game now, I still go mass submarines every single game. Yeah. Because I, I just can't be bothered versus the AI. I just can't be bothered. True. Fully true. Submarine Freeze, till this day, in my opinion, the most overpowered unit next to naval bombers. True. I think the flexibility is what makes them good, too, because they're cheap. So if you have no Navy, Navy production, it just feels like it's something to do. Yeah. And there, there was this off. phase once where I played a lot of competitive, like the highest level of Hoi 4, and... The big question of the meta was, how the hell do we beat something free spam? And we kind of came up with ideas. It's possible to stop them, but the, the effort that you have to bring forth to stop from something freeze is so much higher than the effort a guy has to show who's just making something freeze and spams them. So yeah. that's still... So it brings, us, it brings me back to my point that I would love to see a bit more balance. For example, a big thing I always talk about, improving uh, anti-tank. Uh, the anti-tank um, thingy for infantry. That, so you give your players uh, the opportunity to build an infantry division that can actually kill heavy tank twos or something like that and pierces them. I guess one uh, something else I've just thought of too is some way that nations that are particularly small can get a leg up. It's kind of like 
I'm trying to think of an example. Maybe it was Victoria 2, or maybe I'm thinking of a different game. Is there some way where if you're a minor nation, like in the third world, you have the ability to get aid from the major powers, mm. and it would be a mutual agreement that you would both benefit from it, and I don't know, maybe you use political power, and the result that would be less consumer goods. You'd just be allowed the ability to play as minor nations to make them more fun and interesting. Because when yes, you play as Uruguay point. or Iberia or... Fully true. It's just, thing is... it's just it's a bit stale. So right, um, you know we do these. Uh, what I do lately is role play games with Road to Fifty Six, and there's something very beautiful. For example, Yugoslavia has a focus that it goes with Russia and gives Russia minus five percent consumer goods for one year. Or Iceland. Iceland has a focus that gives English Marines plus fifty percent attack, and this allows you, especially multiplayer, to to interact more with people. If you are the UK in a Road to 56 game, you legit should talk to Iceland and make him like you, so he takes the focus that improves your Marines. That makes the game so much more diverse and so much more complex. That's a, uh, these focuses are really great. Very yeah. true. Okay. Have we oh. got any other topics that aren't hard to find for? Any other topics? What? You want to already leave the Hoi 4 topic? Yeah, man. I have a few questions we, we, here written we, down. We're 27 minutes in. We need to get through like... <laughs> Chill, you need to, yeah, you need to brief. I was watching Joe Rogan uh, every day. He makes one hour 30 to two hour podcasts, okay? There's nothing wrong with that, but I think the problem is that uh, I like to think of the audience's attention span. Well, um, this is a really good question. I'm going to ask the chat for this, actually. So, chat, if there's a, is there a maximum length of a YouTube video that you're willing, you're not willing to watch? Did I say that right? Yeah. So it is there like a maximum length that you say if it's below this certain length of video, I just I'm not willing. I'm not even bothering to click on it. Oh my goodness. Well, wasn't there once uh, this? I mean, I don't know much about YouTube, but there was once some years ago this thing where everybody did 10 minute videos. It had to be 10 minutes. Yeah. Because the YouTube algorithm kind of determined that the average YouTube viewer after 10 minutes it drops in views very hard. I feel like we need to do a straw poll on this. We've got so many different answers. We've got 45 minutes, three hours, two hours. 50, I think maybe 40. this is a very small margin to get a good answer. But uh, yeah, some mod make a poll. But I think the statistics should show show 10 minutes. Yeah, I, I would imagine it probably varies probably around. I would say it's probably 15 to 20 minutes. That's somehow in my head. That's where I imagine. But we have noticed a phase now on YouTube where content creators are making lengths of videos that are significantly longer. And it seems to be working too because some of the people have exploded in growth have got like 30 minute average videos so hmm. maybe there's something to that who knows well again i don't know much about youtube i just know i was a bit surprised when marconi started doing 18 minutes or 20 minute videos but they're doing they're doing just fine so this 10 minute thing doesn't really apply i i think well there's a lot of factors here about who's the content creator how's the audience do you have an adult audience that has a lot of uh, attention span? Are you a kid that watches Jake Paul? You don't have a 30 minute attention span, right? Stuff like that. I yeah. Guess. Have you noticed, do you watch much like Logan Paul videos? No, no. No. It, it, do you know what? Recently, I've been watching them with my girlfriend and I actually really like them. Their average length is like five, six minutes. They're always like really action packed and professionally edited. And they're always just random. It's like, it's like, uh, it's like just junk television, but I don't know, it always is it, really entertaining. And it, uh, the reason I bring that up is because the length of the videos is never over 10 minutes. He just hmm. seems to pack it with as much content that he's got and then just release the video as it is. He probably doesn't do a lot of the editing, to be honest with you. He probably doesn't but set isn't the thing, camera up. Tell me if I'm wrong. I, I, then I don't know. Isn't Logan Paul fully demonetized? So I don't he doesn't know. have to care anymore because his videos don't make money anyway? Do you know how you do say that? Every time I load up one of his videos, I've never got an ad. So maybe yeah, that's uh, true. Since the since he showed the corpse in Japan, I think he's fully demonetized on YouTube. I so know he, he just, lost. He doesn't his have to care anymore. Disney partnership. Yeah, yeah, and I think fully demonetized. Uh, but sometimes I wonder. Uh, one of my favorite YouTubers, for example, is Video Game Donkey and Killed an Experience. You ever heard of them? Yep. And they only do like five minute videos, and I'm always like, 22 what? Twenty two and still what? subbing. So do you make any money with that five minute video every every month? That's that's. I don't I never understand how they survive. I feel like if you've got a really passionate audience and they're willing to watch a video because they, they're almost like subscribed to the idea that your content is always good, I think they'll click regardless and I think the algorithm will push those videos uh, to the trending page. And I think Donkey is an example of that. He's, he's, he, I've noticed too that he, there's never like a dull moment in a Donkey video. It's almost like 
from the start to finish for the five to, or ten minutes, it's like full of edits, you know, like cuts and jokes and whatnot. It's like he's, he probably writes a script. So it puts the effort in, that's for certain. And uh, I think the result of that is based on the, the passion for his community and his fans. Yeah, but I always thought, again, I don't know anything. If you only have a five minute video, no matter how good it is, you can only run a certain amount of commercials. In a 10 minute video, you have double the commercials, which is double the income. Maybe he doesn't care. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, if he gets 10 million like, views a video. I mean. Like Donkey uh, streams, they make a... That's something I realized lately. I'm, I'm now in a bit of contact with big German streamers. These people don't even care about donations anymore. They, they even Some of them even have donations turned off. Because they make enough money from merch, sponsors, Patreon. They, they don't care anymore. And maybe a lot of these YouTubers, maybe the answer is they don't need the YouTube money anymore because they have so much going on the side, I guess. Something like that. I feel like as I've gotten older, people's... I start to understand people's motivations more because when I was younger, did you ever feel like, oh man, it'd be so amazing if I was rich and I owned a fucking Lamborghini, yeah. you know? Yeah. And then now you get to the stage you're at now and you're kind of like, well, I'm comfortable and there's yeah. nothing I really want to buy. I guess maybe a house would be nice, I suppose. But then it, it really puts you in a weird dilemma. It's like when someone's earning like 10 million plus a year, like, I, I, I mean, maybe that number's a little bit high, but maybe about two million a year. Let's just say it's like Ninja, for instance, which just seems a realistic number. Why? Like, what's your motivation to keep going? You know, like, is it just to see that bigger number in your bank account? Because I never quite understood it. That's a very good question, because I feel that all the time. I'm a big PewDiePie fan. I watch him all the time. I think PewDiePie is amazing. And PewDiePie has been ranked one for so many years. The guy must have enough money and shit. Why is he still going through? Why is he still doing YouTube? And the answer is that these people, they have fun with this. They have fun doing it. They have fun being ranked one. They have fun growing their audience. And it's always important to understand when someone is self-employed, it's their baby. No matter how rich you are, you want to keep building on your baby. Like yesterday was someone, someone was asking me the question, Tommy, if you will win the lottery right now, would you still stream? Obviously. Dave, if you will win the lottery right now, would you still do YouTube videos? I'd probably take, I'd probably take like a six months. Break. But you will and come I've... back to doing them, even oh, though you don't yeah. have to. Oh, yeah. I feel like I need the motivation. I, I don't feel that passionate like it's my baby and I want to protect it. Because at the end of the day, if I did take a big break, I, I would take a big hit. Like, I don't yeah. know, my sub counts would probably go into decline, you know? Um, But, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think the luxury of taking a big break would definitely be there if I uh, had just a large amount of money that came out of nowhere. Hmm. I guess maybe at that point, I, maybe I wouldn't care about money, and I'd just be caring about like I don't know my own ambitions and goals. Maybe, maybe I'd become a politics channel. Who knows? At that point, I would not care because I mean the reason. I mean, sorry not to jump onto politics, but the reason I don't talk about politics as much as I used to is I feel like it hurts my brand. So yeah. I mean, I I've really got to choose one or the other. Do I go down the demonetization route of talking about politics and more edgy issues? Or do I go for the route that gets me a comfortable income and the roof over my head? Well, obviously, I'm going to go for the roof, aren't I? True. True. One hour plus won the poll, but again, it's just 91 votes. That's really not a good representation in the poll here. Yeah, I think the, the issue with this data... So just to run, we've run a poll in the chat. What was the question? Oh, if you'd watch over plus one hours for a video. Yeah, so I think the reason why this poll is flawed is we're only asking people who are watching a live stream right now, and these might be people who would watch from your live stream from start to finish in one whole sitting. Yeah. So yeah, these people are probably hardcore yeah, fans to begin it's with. It's not a good group to, to ask that to. Yeah. I suppose what you'd have to do is have three polls, one for YouTube, one for the Twitch stream, one for Discord, and then try and like merge them all the data together to see what you would get. Yeah. So yeah, uh, as your question was, uh, okay, why, are these, why do these people, again. like if you reach a certain income, why would you keep caring? And I think it's this it's this self-employed thing that this is your baby. Like I could right now, for example, go for a two week trip with my girlfriend, but it's very hard to me to just dip the channel for two weeks. Cause if you're self-employed, if you take two weeks off, it shows in numbers, right? The YouTubers know that very much. Um, yeah, I think it's your baby. And that's why you keep pushing. I've never taken an extended break, you know, so I don't actually know. People talk a lot about YouTube of like, if you did take a break, what the impact would be. What I've known from Twitch streamers, though, I'll, I'll use an example of Gross Gore, once again, regardless about his content for one second, but he's taken like really massive breaks in his Twitch career. 
and sure it's hurt him in the long run but whenever he comes back there's almost like a massive amount of like positive energy that comes from it and everyone's yeah. like oh wow i'm gonna watch this guy and he'll get like five or six thousand yeah, views which would... always speak, yeah. yeah that's right the comeback thing um so it, i feel like the the youtube world and the twitch world when it comes down to comebacks i feel like are a little bit different because i don't think <clears> you i think as youtube the longer you probably go the less excitement there will be when you do come back yeah mm. As I always say the whole time, I don't understand YouTube. It's so weird to me. Like, we have this thing right now, Marconi. It's very hard for us on YouTube to make non hoi for content because the YouTube algorithm only pushes us if we have hoi for content. Because the algorithm says this channel is a hoi for channel. Hoi for videos get 100k views. If he makes a fucking, I don't know, different video with a different game, it doesn't get, uh, it doesn't go into your recommended list chat. You don't see it on recommended and it gets only 50k views. So you're kind of in, in a way stuck uh, in a certain topic. Would you agree with that yeah. as a YouTuber? I, this is the way I see it. When people subscribe and hit that subscribe button, they're subscribing for a certain kind of content. So there might be diehard fans. There might be people out there. I love feedback game regardless of what it makes. I just like him as a personality. Those people are great. I'd like to have 150,000 of those, but I don't. At the end of the day, I probably got like... 140,000 of people who subscribe because they liked Hoi4 content. They hit that button because it was Hoi4. So when it pops into my reel that it's a video that isn't Hoi4, they're reluctant to click. And therefore, they're reluctant to click. There's less watch time. When there's less watch time, there's less view duration. When there's less view duration, YouTube will push it less to recommend a box. And so overall, the video will die. So what's the solution? The way I see it is plow. Make videos that aren't Hoi4 until eventually you'll start to get a following other things. And then eventually maybe you'll get enough people that are passionate about you, the personality, exactly. and they won't yeah. like Donkey is, and that way they'll click regardless what the game Very is. True. That's that's the goal right now. And if, if I was a manager for YouTubers, I would tell them all the same. I will tell this to you and Rambler and stuff. I think we all have to slowly step out of this Hoyt foreshadow. Very slowly to, as you just said, get an audience that cares about us as a person and not the content Hoyt 4. True. Yeah. Very well said. That's true. Subscribe for the personality, not subscribe and for the game. And that is kind of the way you see right now on Tommy K. I, I, I don't think we see it in the feedback brand yet. You don't really do that, right? You're still full Hoyt 4, right? No, no. I mean, you're a uh, now. <laughs> I've got a system set up where I do a Hoi 4, then something else, Hoi 4, then something else, Hoi 4, something else. That doesn't apply for the last three videos though, because that PDX deal came around, so therefore I had to make two Hoi 4 videos in a row. But if you consider look back over the last, I don't know, six months, I've followed that formula. I've done quite well. There's a few games that I've played that seem to, the audience for Hoi 4 seem to translate over really well to other games, such as uh, Roman Pera did quite well. Hmm. The EU 4 videos did all right. Uh, but games that were completely outside of the spectrum. For instance, the last Command and Conquer game that I dropped, oof, that did really, really, really badly. And Age of Empires did really badly too. It's almost like, if I stay with Grand Strategy and Paradox, I seem to be doing comfortably. But if I move out of that spectrum to real-time strategy, still strategy, I thought it would work. But fully enough, it seems to find that it kind of dies off. Maybe mm. Civilization would work for me because that's another kind of big strategy game. I don't know, it's something to think about. It's true. So you can say um, that... YouTubers and Twitch streamers that started with a certain niche, like us, Hoi4. It's hard for us to get out of this niche. It's possible, though. And I think the next years we will see where this goes. It's very interesting, very interesting. I think very you have already broken out. I think it proves that when you play Witcher and you get a thousand views. Uh, what was the other game you played the other day you got a thousand with? I think you've definitely got that diehard fan base. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, true, on Twitch, I, I think on Twitch is much easier. Because the personality Tommy K on Twitch can now pull in 1k viewers with everything. But on YouTube, it's so much harder. So much harder. A virtual video will get 30k views. It will just fully die. When I used to stream on Twitch, this is a long time ago, I got an average around about 50 views when I played a lot of like old retro titles like Resident Evil and stuff. A lot of stuff that used to be on like PlayStation in the early, early days. But then when I moved on to another game, you could see that like I got half the amount of views that one would yeah. usually get, maybe like 10 or 20 views. And then you could like see like who were the diehard fans and who were just the people there because they wanted to see True. that specific game. Yeah, and that's just what said, we already said. The goal should be, which is I think easier on Twitch and on YouTube, to get more of these fans that care about you. And the more you get of them, the more you have this power. For example, I'm I envy the streamer Lyric. You know Lyric? Yeah, yeah. These streamers, he can touch whatever he wants, he can play whatever he wants. 
the people always follow him and that's like the goal i think that you can do whatever you want i would never want to end up like dr suspect who is fully stuck in these br games and if he does anything else he gets joked at meme dead and loses viewers and stuff does he want to change or does he I don't, my uh, impression my impression is he really likes that kind of content i guess so i don't know him i would just guess he sees this as a business as a brand and he knows with br games he makes the most income i guess Doc gets me no matter what, yeah. Do you I mean, know Dr. Doc Disrespect's background? He... Uh, yeah, kinda. He used to make uh, maps card for maps. Call of Duty, yeah. And Does then the he one... came up with this personality and look where he is now. Yeah, boy, well, he's doing way better now than he ever has, yeah. Yeah, he, he, I loaded up his stream one day and he was he was actually making a map. And he, he, he was, oh, oh no, he wasn't making a map. He was loading up old maps and other ones yeah, he he'd made. Yeah, he was checking old maps, I saw that, yeah. Yeah, that was actually so cool. I was yeah. actually fascinated by that. And that I was like, that. it was completely out of the character too because he wasn't playing his old macho, kind of retro, badass Chad Boyo, was he? Yeah. Yeah. Like he was talking about how like he made this map, but this had to be changed Just because the people specifically camped in this certain Tommy spot. Green and I was like, oh, that's kind of fascinating. I I really like the kind of like the law that goes into stuff. Mm. Here's a good. Here's a. There's a guy in chat saying something that that comes up with something. The guy, I'm not gonna say what he's saying, but he's kind of introduced in saying that because I'm a content creator that's very personal and shares a lot of stories, it's easier for the audience, for the viewer, to connect with me and follow me into other games. Do you feel that? you or or other hoi for youtubers uh should have been or could be more personal about themselves to would you say that someone who's more personal with audience has it easier to get out there to leave the niche of hoi for and would that be something for you i think the answer there is no though how, how do you see that theory hmm i think what i'm going to say here is it's probably easy to disprove because there's 101 different exceptions to the rule. I think the way I see it is if you, for instance, sell yourself as a certain nationality and push that as a stereotype and you kind of push a lot of cliches that go with that stereotype, let's say being British and drinking tea, for instance, <laughs> I think with that you can form a connection with that character, with the audience. It doesn't have to be you. It can be a character, for instance, Got to disrespect isn't a person it's a character he's created and because of that i think people can latch on to that character and then go with it to other videos so i think the answer to your question is yes but there's probably 101 different exceptions to that rule which it doesn't apply okay let's let, let, like so we have two different universes so one right now where you are dave right now and we have a universe where feedback gaming five years ago start doing youtube content as a character a british whatever character would you think the character they would have been further now than yes. the current yes that's very 100 percent. yes that's very interesting i feel like i missed the bandwagon when it came down to pushing me as a national stereotype hmm. uh because <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like I, I missed something there. There was definitely something they're missing. Uh, it, it's hard to convey in a very short YouTube video like your personality and who you are and what you're all about and give something about your specific personal life. I drop a few little eggs in my videos every now and then, maybe showing a personal picture from an old PDX con or a personal picture that's something IRL or a picture from my cat or something. I don't know. I don't really think that really works that well effectively. It's just something to fill a gap in a video most of the time. But no, I, I, de I definitely think there's instances where I could have pushed more of me into my video. Um, I think, I think, I think, the, I think people are reluctant to do that because I think they're worried to reveal their personal life. They want to keep this as a business and then their personal life separately. Yeah. I think that's a lot of time why they create characters instead of pushing them as an individual. True, true. And also, yeah, we have to say that uh, on Twitch, it's much easier. To connect with your audience because youtube you have the video it's not live on twitch there's a dude eight hours sharing a lot of maybe personal stuff you can ask him live questions i think it's easier for streamers to to build these characters to build a connection with their audience than youtubers you guys have it hard you guys have it harder there i think i used to say this a long time ago that people come for the game but they stay for the personalities and i think that's the reason people why people use cams on twitch because when you see someone's face, you can see how they react emotionally, their expressions. You can connect them way better than you would if you didn't have a cam. True. In the end, I, I, that's why I always say Twitch is is your internet friend. 
you go to a stream and there's a dude who you hang out with he reacts to you he maybe even sometimes answers your questions it's like a it's like a friendship it's obviously not a real one but people come to twitch to not feel alone and have social gathering i think and you don't have that on youtube yeah, I think it's difficult to convey that. The reason why I was saying there's exceptions to the rule is because I think Donkey, for instance... I mean, could you tell me something about Donkey? What, what's his personality like? Uh, he's a... Uh, uh, yeah, it's impossible, isn't normal... it? I struggle too. Yeah. I, I only know from the memes because everyone said... Everyone used to joke before he showed his face that he was black. And everyone said he had a <laughs> black voice. I think I thought that too in the beginning. Yeah, that, that's, that's the, the only thing I can convey his personality is a meme that someone else made about him. Yeah. <laughs> True. Well, these, yeah, always depends how you want to go with this. You want to build a character, you want to connect, you want to bring out personal information. It's always, like I was, I was always a very open streamer sharing a lot of personal stuff and it, it got me in a lot of trouble personally and stuff like that. Everything has pros and cons, you know? And sometimes I envy the, the content creators that are very, very disconnected from sharing private stuff with the chat. Sometimes I envy them. Yeah. I think in the early days, it, it did benefit you. I think people were able to connect with you over other Hoi4 streamers because you were willing to give so much away about your life. And I think your stories were what people really connected with. Yeah, I, think they saw, I think they saw themselves in you. Yeah, I, that's what I, I always feel like I'm like the, the worker class streamer. Like, people come on the stream and they're like, hey, that's one of us, man. This guy's one of us. That's that's what I think helped the stream a lot. I know and you've I, put I, down I, I, on the stories, but... No, they definitely helped you in the beginning, I think. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, but it always gave some trouble when you were too personal. And something that bother, not bothers me, something that I think a lot lately. The more you grow as a content creator, the more hard it gets to stay connected with your audience. It, it Because your life changes in a way that... Like, I don't have... People always ask me, do you have any stories, Tommy? I don't have any stories anymore. I don't work in a supermarket anymore, beating up junkies and doing crazy shit. I don't have these stories anymore. And the, the more you grow, maybe the less an audience feel connected with you. It's like the... Um, I was what, I was listening to a podcast the other day. They call it the Ricky Gervais phenomenon. Ricky Gervais and his stand-up is getting worse because he doesn't get real-life stories anymore. He, when yeah. you are a guy that lives in a big mansion in a very rich neighborhood and you don't have normal problems anymore with normal people you can't collect with your normal audience anymore you know what i mean like i'm not really yeah. base, you know but you know <laughs> no no i can see that it's a lot like, of the time it's like you have this phenomenon and this is it's just the truth chat I'm, i shouldn't say this it's bad for business when you were a nobody and you get a hundred dollar donation you 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 legit are like oh my fucking god are you kidding me ridiculous and it's just the truth, I just want to be honest. If you now get a hundred dollar donation, it's still amazing, it's still crazy. But obviously it's much less emotional than four years ago when you, the hundred dollars were like 25% of your monthly income. Stuff like that. Yeah, and it's, 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 it's hard to stay, I don't want to say humble, but to stay connected, you know, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's someone you step into a different world, like a hundred dollars is life changing for someone who has nothing. But then a hundred dollars to someone who's comfortable, it's like, Wow, thanks for that spare change. I appreciate it, but it's hard for me to get excited. <laughs> yeah, it's just the truth of life, man. And uh, this is why uh, you see a lot of bigger content creators on YouTube and Twitch to to step away. Like, they, it's not so much about donations anymore, it's more about sponsorships and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. 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 I mean, uh, Alex just said in chat that 50% of his YouTube content now is not Hoi4. That would be interesting to ask him how that's going. Hmm. That's good. Oh my god, that's amazing. Yeah, I, it's, it's always feel like it's it's an investment. When, when you when people like us step away from Hoi4 content, we first lose... I've always mentioned like a stock, you know? The feedback gaming stock. If you leave Hoi4, your stock goes down, but it could be long-term investment raising the stock uh, on a higher level than Hoi4 could ever reached. That's why I, I think, think about this stuff. Yeah, I, I think I agree with the premise of that. I think the, that's why I'm trying to make it a transitional thing. I don't want to kill my views, but I also want to be able to migrate to other fan bases and enjoy what they're doing. I think when I pumped out like four Roman Parrot videos in a row, I did notice that I was getting a little bit of a following with that. And every now and I'll get a comment on a new video that says, when's Roman Parrot videos coming back? And I'm like, I'm kind of done with that game now, you know? So, <laughs> I don't want to tell them that, obviously, because I don't want them to subscribe. But the truth behind it is just like... <laughs> that's a good tactic. Don't tell them. Whenever someone in my chat says, Tommy, will you play that game again? No, fuck you, bitch. Get the fuck out of here. 
<laughs> I just learned something from Dave here. Yes, guys, I will play Rome one day. Please subscribe. I just reply soon in, in all capitals. Soon. <laughs> soon. Yeah. Davey. I think we needed a question that isn't either business or computer gaming. Something maybe okay. that's happening Let's in the world. Let's take one maybe. more maybe question about... Uh, didn't I have a question here? No. Nah. I have a question here from Marconi saying, I'm just going to read okay. it, I didn't prepare that. Who is Marconi? You, Marconi is, uh, he makes noodles. He sells good noodles. Um, mm -hmm. How do you guys deal with the pressure of basically running a small business, knowing there's a possibility that all of this could fall apart in an instant? Oh, uh, yeah. Message yeah, by, saw that one. question by Marconi. So Marconi, if anyone doesn't know, is uh, Tommy's editor and secretary. And manager and dad. In a way. Whoa, that's deep. Very deep, man. Very deep. So, what would you say to that que <coughs> question? Also, the second Corona Rave, I'm the living proof. Uh, what would you say to the question, Dave? I have always been the kind of person that lives for today and tomorrow. I know tomorrow is used as like a way of fighting anything that could happen in the future, but I'm always thinking within a really narrow time frame. And because of that, I don't find myself like thinking too much about a month, two month, or years in the future. I'm very locked into today, I'm very present. Um, and I think that might be one of the reasons, not to go on another tangent, but what I've been quite good with my mental health because I, I'm never like thinking in the past about worrying about the past or looking into the future, or worrying about the problems that could happen in the future. So I, that, a lot of that stuff doesn't really affect me. So when I think about, oh, the end of YouTube, the, the, the downfall of Twitch and subscriptions and all the other hoo-ha i don't know it just really doesn't bother me um when it comes to realistic though when it comes down to when i do think about it i see myself for the long haul with this even when things get really 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 bad i think i'd still stick with it i was a bit of my origin story but when i used to work call centers i was always said to myself if i had made it on twitch and i was making like minimum wage over a monthly period i would quit my job and that would mean i would take a drop down in wages now for the most part i've never known any twitch streamer or youtuber who's willing to admit that they would always say something like, oh i have to make like double or triple before i quit my job but i was always willing to take a step down just because i just detested what i did for a living so mm -hmm. much so i was willing to be an exception to that rule so even if things get really, really, really bad, I'm sticking with it, boyo. Stick it to the end. <laughs> okay. But do are you... Um, when I became a content creator, a lot of the normies in my life, like parents and stuff like that, they always used to say, do you have a second plan? Do you have a, uh, do you have a parachute? Do you have a plan when this all goes down? Do you have a yeah. plan like this, Dave? I think I'd probably like... Oh, I think I'd either do video editing for people maybe on low key like five and then work my way up to potentially That's do something true. bigger. That's something people don't realize that editors are the future man. I could do I could I could potentially see myself do QA at Paradox as well. That's something I could do as well. What does is QA it, mean? Is, is it Q, um, is it QA? QA is the beta testers, isn't it? I'm thinking ah. of the ones who do like the social media stuff. Do like, you could work for Paradox, they like you. You could uh, get me you could get me uh, <laughs> <laughs> Potentially. I think it's actually really hard work and uh, compared to what we do, for instance, it's, it's it's real work. I'm doing that with, you can't see me if I'm doing commas. Hmm. Yeah, it's real work. Um, so I don't know. I, once again, I think it would be a step down for what I currently do at the moment. And uh, no, but I, once again, one, I don't worry about it. Two, I think I like I've got lots of other skills I could dip into, probably all tech related, all online or working from home. So I don't know. I just don't really think about it. I don't really worry about it. How do you, how about you? Do you worry? Well, you just make me scared because you said you have skills. Because I don't have any skills. If if I my content will die right now, if this brand will die right now, I'm an unfinished law student who doesn't know anything about editing. I won't have any skills. That's true. Now, now I'm scared. <laughs> Back oh, to no. university. Thank you guys. Goodbye. No. Uh, my plan is just like you live in the present. Believe in it. That's very important. You believe in yourself. But it's obviously very adult and professional and clever to always have a second plan. My second plan is literally just be good with money, save money, have a certain amount of money that if, like right now, in this second, my YouTube and Twitch just dies and I'm not allowed to ever create content again, I have enough money in my bank account to still finish two years of law school. That's my second plan. 
pretty much. Yeah, you've got law school. That's your skill, isn't it? Oh, and I will just fucking suck at that shit. I'll fuck at everything. I will just get wrecked there. And I will probably get very depressed. Did you enjoy I, law? Nah, 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 nah. I can never say that. It's cool. It's not fucking bad. But the, the entire atmosphere of being a university student, being in a university culture, being in law and what it means, I, I very much detested that. I, 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 I am... I'm pretty sure if, if I would have a normal life and did become a streamer, I would right now sit in a law office and I'd be... I thought I'd not be very happy. I wouldn't be very happy, I think. The job I always wanted was to be that tech support guy, you know, the guy who, like, does all the networking on the computers and fixing stuff like that. And I studied hmm. at college for it, and I did it for a year, but I never could get a job actually doing it. So I feel there's two parts of me, like, the abilities that you've got and skill that you can do that you can actually make money with, but then there are also, like, I don't know, like, there's a lot of, like, skills and qualifications out there that don't really necessarily lead down to you earning extra money. Hmm. And, uh, yeah. I think it's why it's good to know a lot of, a lot of things. It's good to know a lot about a lot of little things. And uh, True, with that, with that, you can spread no, out. The, and the, the problem is always, like, in real life, you can know a lot of things. But if you have no degree to show, for example, Germany like that, no one cares. If you go to, uh, to um, how do you say in English, when you talk to a boss and if he wants to hire you, uh, a job interview, uh, and you're like, I'm really good at editing and programming, but I don't have a degree to show it, they will just send you away, you know? So... Got it. Oh, one sec. We got, we got a bad boy. Man, didn't have an animal long time here. There you go. Uh, and his name is Red Bull. Gives you wings. Wait. Um. Yeah, but uh, Dave, as you just said, in a per uh, God comes down from heaven right now, and I unbanned him. Oh God, reban him. Uh. <laughs> what the fuck? I'm the worst streamer ever. God comes down from heaven and he says, Dave, I will right now reset your life. You will be zero years again. And what, when you were born, 1981, right? And um, he says, you will get any dream job you tell me right now in this second life. Which dream job would you choose? Any job I can choose from? Or maybe let's change the question. I like to say this question. Every job on earth pays the same. What job would you like? Every job on earth gets 2k a month. Everything. If it's a plumber or a fucking stockbroker. They all bring the same. What job will Dave love? What would be your love, most loved job? So my initial... I was going to answer your first question just by saying something something that made a lot of money and then I could retire really quickly. Yeah, but the second question got you there. <laughs> I guess the choice there is like, do you choose something really easy or do you do something that kind of mentally challenges you? I guess maybe... Hmm. I, I, this is similar to what I said before, like how I would like to be able to talk more about politics, but I realize the consequences of that. And I feel like my objective would always be to kind of create a better world. So if, knowing that everyone got paid exactly the same, I'd probably just do something that would uh, better people's lives. I don't know. Like, for instance, I feel like charity works. I'm not, not that I can say that I've ever done it, but I feel like charity work is something that's really rewarding if you got potentially paid for it as well, make a living out of it as well. I guess I feel like I lean in that specific direction. I don't know. That's, a, that's such a big question. You should have prepped me on that in advance. You should have thought about it. I know. <laughs> I want the pure reaction on that. I don't know, man. I don't know. It's difficult. I don't know. Maybe I'd go into politics and then I'd actually become a uh, member of a party and then become an MP, that's maybe. And then right. potentially I feel like I could change the world internally from the inside. Maybe that's something I would do, maybe. Predator. But then potentially those people get so paid I quite a lot. They take a lot of deals on the side and whatnot, don't they? So. Now. There's this potential to make money with that as well. Hmm. Because my answer to that question is legit still streamer. <laughs> it's still streamer. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, just play game. I mean... Oh, like, I mean, uh, like Lisa has... Uh, <laughs> you have a good answer. Um, uh, uh, hotel tester. Like, you travel the world and shit. Something like that. Like Hot testing... He uh, tests or... hotels. Yeah, you don't know the job hotel tester? These people make mad money. They Do go to hotels all around the world and test them. Are they like critics? Like they give yeah, like, like scores? Yeah, hotel critics. Yes, there's like oh, YouTube right. documentaries about them. They make mad money and they, the hotels uh, treat them like stars because they want a good review, right? Mm. Stuff like that. It would definitely yeah. be something that you would probably... I, I guess the question would be, is it like... Is it something you want to better the world with? Which I feel like that's where I live more. Or is it something that you can just grind out the rest of your life and just get... I don't know, some kind of enjoyment now. And I guess it proves that your answer was streaming, so therefore you, you do enjoy what you do. Yeah, I was like, I think you should answer this question with what gives you most fun, right? You wake up in the morning fucking ready 
to get your job done and you're happy doing it. I just got a subscriber who said <laughs> a streamer I supported for five years just got outed as a sexual predator, so now you can have my sub. <laughs> oh my yeah, did God, you hear that? Sad. Did you hear that uh, controversy? Yeah. <laughs> I think today five people got perma banned for that. Thank, thank you, man. That is, I've um, seen I've seen the Twitter list on Twitter. And it, the amount of people that have came out with stuff and said stuff about people, it's like oof, hmm. oof. I don't know, man. It's, hey, uh, more subs for me, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean the death of Mixer, the banning of all these other people. I mean, at the end of the day, I guess there's lots coming your way. I guess. Yeah, yeah. Now, this is this is uh, obviously uh, edgy topics. I don't know if this podcast is ready yet for these topics. Yeah, but this. This would definitely 100% get caught. <laughs> okay, now well, let's do it another time. No, we're up to an hour right now, so just oh. do the outro stuff. Oh, man. oh he always he said you. He no, so we, much have, more we have than to, I am. We have to end this on a high. We we can't like drag it on forever and ever. We have to make it concise, and we do it. We'll do it once a week. Okay, well, I have like it 20 or four questions here, and we did two. Like one, yeah, I think that's, that's a good. Question by Swedish cover. Please ask Dave why he exploits so much. Because <laughs> it gets views. It's People good. like it. People like to cheat. Like, as a kid, can you remember when you played your first game and you like the first thing you wanted to do when you got online was search for uh, something something cheats online to get the cheat codes and everything. Exploits are just basically cheats. That's all they are, yeah, and you can do them in proper games like I am animal multiplayer. Curious on that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. This has been an awesome podcast. How do you think it went? That's an 8.6 out of 10 for me. Yeah, I think it went pretty yeah. well. Apart from me yeah. sweating absolute balls right now. Yeah, I, I, um, legit, I legit have to uh, switch my t-shirt in the middle of the stream now. Uh, every stream. Because I smell, I start smelling, and I need to change my shirt and wash me under my arms, you know? <laughs> yeah, this is going to be really... Yeah. Think about air conditioning. Pops. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, anyway, I've been Feedback Gaming. You can find me at youtube.com forward slash Feedback Gaming. Actually, I don't think that's the URL. Just type Feedback Gaming into Google. And who are you? My name is Tommy K. Check me out on... Uh, wait. Uh, dude, the other day I was tweeting out that I'm streaming and I said www.twitch.tv slash real Tommy K. But my name is Tommy K. Live. <laughs> <laughs> what, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, uh, just Google Tommy K, man, okay? You, yeah, you know who I am, go. boys. You know who I am. The real man, the myth, the legend. Guys, it's been awesome. I hope you have an awesome day, and I will see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Say bye. And now these YouTubers make a cut, and now you can just talk freely. So let's uh, talk about uh, rapists, Dave. What do you think about Trump? Yeah, <laughs> 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 uh, 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 that was a hey, chat. Uh, Z, one to ten. How was that? I'm joy. This is fun as fuck. I like this. I always feel like time goes by too fast. I would love to. Is there any? Is there any things you you like want to talk about? Critique the podcast because I, I brought up a lot of issues at the beginning as well. So you need to be open about it as well. What do you mean? Sorry again. Sorry. What? Yeah. So at the very beginning, I brought like a list of things that I'd like to see changed for this oh, specific sure, podcast. Yeah, sure. So so what I'm asking you is: Is there any things that you would like to do differently? <sighs> Man, I don't think. Uh, I, I'm always a guy that advocates spontaneous wipes. I don't think about this too much. I, I, t I take Joe Rogan as a as a big idol. I like his podcast, and it's no, it's important to always let the other one speak, and I think we're doing that rightly. So, um, no, I have actually nothing negative to say. No, you just prefer it to go on longer, wouldn't you? Hey, as long as it's vibing and going well, uh, we will, we were about to reach 1K viewers on just chatting here, man, bro. And you fucked Amazing. the 1K viewers up, Dave, for fuck's sake. I know, I ruined it. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry, chat. Do you accept my apology, chat? And yeah, I just <laughs> like these this podcast concept of just talk. I'm not going to prepare a lot here. I'm just, just talk. Just get into it and talk. No, no, no. They hated it. They hate it. They're all mad. They're all so sorry. Yeah. What have you done to them? Ah, they should be happy. They should be feel privileged for what they just were, but for the, what they just saw. Hey, okay. by the way, I'm getting, I'm getting better at editing multiplayer content, so if we wanted to do something with a game, potentially, then I feel like I've got a better method of doing it now. What do you mean? Potentially. What do you mean? So, I did the PDX thing, uh -huh. uh, and it was a multiplayer, and that video how did many, can amazing. I ask how many views that got on Twitch? Do you know that? How many people were watching that? 
Oh, I don't know. I'm Anyone no else chat? How much views it, did the Paradox game get? Tommy, I'm just going to tell you what you want to hear. It was less views than what you got on your channel. There you go. I said what yes! you wanted to hear. Time to jump over it, Donald. What slow standing, huh? <laughs> anyway, so I, I found a method of editing videos for multiplayer it, it, way more efficiently. So what I was basically telling you that I could I could do something with you in future and then potentially make a video. That's all you want to, like, you mean a multiplayer game with others or just you and me or? I don't know. Probably would be better if it's more personal between me and you because that RP game we did ages ago was just shit because yeah. I was just too far away from you. So I couldn't get involved anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I have an offer for you if you want to take that up to you. Uh, I have um... uh, 1v1, Red Alert 1. <sighs> no. You what? said you wanted to play me at Red Alert 1 yesterday. That's what you said. I said CNC. You were like, oh, no, it's CNC. Fake news. I said Red Alert 2. Red okay. Alert 2. Okay, yeah, Red Alert 2. Sure. Download the, what's it called? There's a version online you can get called CNC Net. Get that. We'll play it. 1v1. Come on, it's bro. It's not remastered yet. They will remaster that next. Ah, look at that. He's I dodging, was guys. so hot, Red Alert 2, man. I'm this the is best a dodge. Tell player ever. Desolators, bro, you don't even know. Everyone in the chat, tell him if he's dodging. He's 100% dodging, right? Give us a oh, yes in the this, chat. This, this is dank as Mimikus tactic. <laughs> Tommy, you want to want me in a game that you never played before and I play every day? What, what the hell? You, Dave? you I never you played Red Alert 2? Convention, bro. You never played Red Alert 2? What did I? Hey, uh, as a kid. Dude, legit story. I, I This is the truth of God. You know Red Alert 2, right? With Tanya and yeah, yeah. Yuri. Yeah, yeah. My father has the most hours in this game on this entire planet. True story, wow. man. My dad plays this game every day since release. <laughs> Cause he's a boomer. He has no other game. He plays this game every day. <laughs> and he still sucks at it though. All right, what, who hours. wants to see me 1v1 Tommy's dad? <laughs> <laughs> I want to see one of my dad and something else. Um, Dave, one day I have like this, this idea. One day when I'm a big, big streamer, I will make a show on Twitch. It's a beat the streamer. It's, I'm kind of stealing that from a drum TV show where two people come together like you and me and we have to do 10 things against each other like it's an rl stream we have to play one game of command conquer but after that we have to play one game of table tennis after that always funny games one day we're gonna do that man oh, okay. the Germans. have you are you Death familiar with raj raj's show on youtube on twitch uh there's a guy called, called raj patel yeah i know him i don't know what he does though every time i see a stream it's a bunch of Better males and weird girls talk about shitty drama or some stuff. It, it reminded me of that. Yeah, it's kind of like a talk show slash, um, I don't know, like a quiz show, I guess. That's a quiz show. Isn't there like can, always. Can, can, a, well, a they vote, they vote each other someone... off, don't they? That's what I thought made it quizzy. Like, yeah, it's called Austin now. He, he, he abandoned the Raj Patel name because he said it was a bit edgy. Because he used to do like this fake Indian voice and he's, he's gotten rid of uh, all that now. Uh, uh, uh. Isn't that a, like where a girl has to choose a streamer she wants to date or some shit? I yeah, don't, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's we're gonna the make date. that much better. Well, I don't know, but there you go. You, there's your platform. Because I mean, Raj, Raj's show, or Austin's show, is 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 the biggest probably show on Twitch. So I guess you'd be competing with them, I guess. No, no I just mean in the future, in like some years, if we're if, if I'm getting big enough, I would like to bring higher production value to streams where you legit have a camera crew. I mean, this is just future dreaming, and you legit have some cool IRL streaming stuff for like where people compete and stuff well whatever it's big future talk but one day dave don't call me out for a one-on-one -on -one in command conquer hey you one-on-one -on -one me in hoi four in, in i wanted to wrestle you at paris you didn't do it i, I want to do arm wrestling with you uh we you can were pretty do... distant listen you talk so big prior to paradox con about how we're gonna wrestle we're gonna fight you're gonna get naked with me I, yeah you literally said that at some point and then when you actually saw me at pdx con you seemed so more reserved than i thought you were gonna be were you nervous around me did i make you nervous N no i'm not nervous with on anyone i think just there was too many people i i can't just fucking double like take down you in front of all the security there and shit you know <laughs> And one thing that also Chet has to understand, when you meet people in real life, it's very different. People are normal in real life. In real life, you don't, at Paradox Con, you don't run around, Abdulaziz, hello, hello, Tommy. No, when you meet people in real life, for Bold example, spot. Paradox Con, pe pe I'm going to get a transplant soon. Uh, people are <laughs> much more normal. Hey, hello, hey, hey, Dave. How you? I'm a big fan. Uh, so don't act all hot, Chet. When you guys meet me in real life, you guys are like this, okay? Uh, Tommy, I uh, don't want to disturb you, man. Yeah. That was really good. But they, we're, the we're, gonna, we're, we're gonna wrestle. Well. We're gonna wrestle. Yeah, potentially. I'm really weak, though. That's the problem. I've got, like, Boomer. I've got full-on Boomer, and you probably would completely dominate me. Maybe I'm into that. Who knows? That's why I want to wrestle you, because I'm into that. <laughs> if you... <laughs> 
if you... So, once again, God comes from heaven and he says, I will make you the greatest in a certain sport. What sport would you choose? A sport mm. where you can fully... You're the greatest. You love it. It's your sport. What sport oh, would shit. Dave love to be the legend at? I, don't, I feel like I fantasize about being like a, like a, a footballer. And then, yeah, like, being, like, this I mean, this amazing goalkeeper that, like, like lets so there you go. go by them. He's English a little bit. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, I thought, I thought that would be really fucking cool. Like, can you imagine being, like, this undefeatable goalkeeper? And then every single game would be nil-nil and go to penalties every single time. And you would just destroy the other side because nothing would go by you. Sounds a bit so OP, awesome. yeah, but it sounds good, yeah. <laughs> the incredibly boring games would be able to Dave watch, Dave the though. goalkeeper, man. <laughs> and after the interview, Oh, my name is Dave. Yeah, it was a good game. Hey, what really are you gonna play Bruce next, Tommy? Like I'm, I'm watching. Uh, what? What are you gonna play next? I will play Witcher now. And uh, I was just about to say, I'm learning British from The Witcher because all the peasants in The Witcher talk like, oh, "Me things, I don't eat fish and chips, mate." They they talk very British. I like that. So if you if you do get the balls to do it, uh, Red Alert one, or Red Alert two, one v one, my Discord. <sighs> Many well, times, dude. Look, I'm always open for challenges, <laughs> but this is this is fake. This is like like Dex asked me for one on one. The uh... you people played that game, I would have to legit use my private time and prepare myself and practice a bit. And I don't want to waste my private time on some shitty Command & Conquer game. Okay? You guys want to see Red Alert 2 though, right? The, if you practice for it, they'll love to see you. You can play ranked games against like... I, I, we've that, we've dude, already gonna, played Jess. In the I next destroyed three years, him. In the next few years, there will be a remaked version of Red Alert 2. And there will be legit an esports scene, 100%. Anyway, your chat is desperately wants you to play Witch 3, okay? And they're, they're really a big fan of it, so I'm going to let them go now, okay? Okay, Dave. Maybe one day I'm asking Gold and you might McConnell or something. That'd be cool. McConnell? You don't know that? Oh, you don't know Who's McConnell? That? No. You know, Asmund Gold, how do I explain that, chat? Asmund Gold is kind of one of the biggest streamers. Right? I think he's top three right now. And he has a guy, uh, 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 he, he's his friend or something. He knows him from the Warcraft, uh, McCuck. And he's always on on the stream and just comments and stuff. It's like, you know, when Jimmy Kimmel, when they have their sidekicks, Jimmy Fallon and stuff. And there's just always, he streams. And there's just a dude always in Discord who comments on stuff. He's just there. <laughs> oh, wow. It's the weirdest shit, man. He says you're Marconi, basically. What? You're, you're my, you're, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like he's like the guy in the back, the manager, the secretary. No, not, just a sidekick to comment stuff, not the manager. Oh, uh, okay. Right. Anyway, I'm going to go though. Tommy's been lovely. I love you to bits. Love Enjoy you. your Witcher. Bye bye. You're beautiful. Bye. bye. Dave. Feedback Gaming. That was him. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, let me ban. I need to ban some people here. Vincent seems to be a fucking retard. Uh, let's get him out. Bam, bam, bam. Okay. That was uh, Tommy Talks. Almost 1k viewers on that cancer. Uh, that, actually, that wasn't cancer. That was actually... Sorry, I take that back. That was really good. I really enjoyed that. I want to... Dude, I'm really getting into this. I want to talk more to people. I, I can't wait to invite more people and grow this pot. It's hard for me to call this a podcast, man. Um, by no regret. And yeah, I want to do more of this. And I, I can't wait. Like, no disrespect to Dave. I love Dave. But I can't wait to talk to different people. I'm really interested to talk to. Is Alex still watching? He's probably left, that fucker. Alex the Rambler. Is he still in here? No, he left. I'm very excited to talk to Alex Rambler and Bokwin and. You know, not just talk to them about games and what do you think about it for? Like, legit pro cool shit, man. Stuff that, that people give a fuck about, man, you know? Uh, will you invite Marconi to podcast? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have good ideas. We're gonna get there. Uh, let, uh, we have to wait a bit. Uh, very, very soon, I think in two weeks, you will officially see the second Tommy K channel on YouTube. Thank you, Light Lobster. Thank you. The second Tommy, Tommy, Tommy K channel is gonna open up soon. Which, uh, where I will try to market or build up a presence of a real podcast. A real, like you can legit go on that channel, click on the video, you have a one hour podcast fully edited and everything. And when that is done, I'm gonna grow this out a bit and I'm gonna start inviting people. I have great ideas, talking to Lisa. Lisa has a lot of uh, uh, opinions on feminism and women's rights and why not? Li let's listen to it, like educated people. Let's try to, let's see where this goes. I have a lot of ideas. I, I would love to invite Tracy Cola once to talk to her about how does it feel to be a woman on Twitch. Uh, I would love to invite other people. Uh, Marconi, obviously. Fabian, how is it to be in esports? Stuff like that. Very interesting. I will be the Joe Rogan of Twitch. Just uh, with 99.99% less viewers. Oh, oof. The 
let's calm down real quick. How are you guys doing anyway? That was the podcast. I hope you enjoyed that.